Okay, so the next section is going to be focused on the um, the types of authentication protocols that we're going to be dealing with. Um, the important piece of this is understanding the technologies. We'll talk about how they actually accomplish, you know, that authentication piece, and then go from there. So the very first one uh, that we'll discuss is one of the legacy uh, protocols. Uh, called um, password authentication protocol. So as you can see from the graphic, we had a situation where both username and password would be entered into the system. Um, and then you would get a simple acceptance or rejection based off the username or password. The problem with this was that anybody sitting on that particular network segment uh, could see both the username and password in clear text. Oh my God. So that would provide for a lot of that. Now, uh, keep in mind, you know, back when these things were being developed, um, like FTP, right, Telnet, all of these things were developed for the purposes of communication. There wasn't even a thought in their minds that there was a security issue that needed to be uh, addressed at that particular point in time. Okay, uh, so what they wind up doing after that was they decided, okay, look, we know that we're going to have some unencrypted traffic sent, why don't we just go ahead and uh, make a modification to the password authentication protocol. We'll call it Shiva password authentication protocol for the, the designer. And we'll replace uh, PAP and then actually encrypt both the username and password. Okay, so both of those would be encrypted on the other side. They would decrypt the information and you would get an acceptance or a rejection. So. Um, there's an issue with this though. It is also uh, prone to a man-in-the-middle attack, which means that if stuff was sent between you and the server, uh, somebody could act as the server and then send back bunk um, uh, information and then communicate directly with that instead. Okay, So that's probably not the best methodology in, in order to do authentication protocol. So let's take a look at uh, what the, you know, follow-on to this was. This is one of the first ones where it really did take into account um, man in the middle and try to thwart those types of attacks. It's called Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. And what it does is instead of ever sending username and password information uh, into the system, the the client would actually make a request in order to get access to the system, all right? What would wind up happening is a challenge or a piece of information would be sent back to them, and then what you would do was you would encrypt that value and send it back, and then what the server would do is it would compare the two values to see if they were the same, in case that they are the same. And what's nice about this is even if somebody's sitting in the middle, and captures the information on both sides, they don't know what either side actually wind up sending because of the encryption piece, okay? And so this challenge handshake authentication protocol was much more um, modern in the way in which it dealt with the uh, authentication piece. Okay, a couple of other authentication protocols to keep in mind. Um, one-time uh, password, and this would be time-based, where if you attempted to access a system at 12 o'clock on a certain day, you would get a password, and not only would it be able to tell you that, um, that you have access, but it would also be able to test to see if it was a previously generated password and would prevent those from being able to be used in the system. And then finally, HMAC, or uh, Hash Message Authentication Code, Based password and once again what it does is it uses a hash based code that is utilized in order to provide the password information. 